<laughs> All right, so what we have here today is the brand new backlight kit for Game Boy Advance from uh, Funny Playing. Uh, now, I'm not 100% sure what this kit is going to come with when it finally releases this. Full disclosure, this is a pre-production sample. I am uh, fairly confident this adapter ribbon here is the final version, uh, but I did... I don't know. Uh, I, I just know I'm getting this before it comes out, and I am 100% sure it's a pre-production version because I have gotten with mine two 40-pin Game Boy Advance ribbon adapters instead of one 40-pin, 132-pin. Um, I am fairly confident that the final version will be coming with a 32-pin adapter and a 40-pin. Not two 40s. Anyway, that's besides the point. Um, I don't actually know this. This is speculation, but I suspect the final one will be coming with a new lens, uh, a new adhesive gasket for sticking this into your shell, um, perhaps an aligning bracket. Who knows? We'll see. Uh, maybe some wire, uh, because this does include some uh, solder pads for um, button-based touch controls, button-based brightness controls, excuse me, and it does have a uh, sensor on the ribbon for touch controls if you prefer that, but I like the uh, button controls better. Anyway, what's unique about this kit compared to the previous kits is you might have noticed that this uses a different LCD than the uh, prior kits. The prior kits used this, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Blackberry 9380 LCD, which I call it that because it's out of a Blackberry 9380, uh, but you can see it's a little bit different in size. Uh, it's quite a bit smaller than the new LCD. It is also significantly thinner. So the new LCD should be a little bit more um, resistant to handling if you're a little bit rough on your things but it does unfortunately mean that all of our IPS ready shells aren't going to work with this because this is a chunky screen here. Uh, the upside, if you will consider it that, is that this is a little bit more close to stock uh, Game Boy Advance screen size. Uh, not the LCD itself, but the actual image on the screen once you've got this powered up. Uh, which means that it does not quite work with the IPS ready uh, lenses, but that doesn't mean that doesn't necessarily mean you don't want to use one of these anyway. You can tell the difference in the bezel between an IPS ready one, especially if you look at the top right corner, you can see how much thinner it is there. Um, because, like I said, even though it's closer to OEM size, it is still just a hair bigger than OEM. So that's that's my guess. That's why I'm assuming that these will be coming with a new lens. Um, I'm guessing they're just not done and they wanted to send this over to me because it is done and they wanted me to check it out. I have been somewhat vocal about uh, my disapproval of... Um, this new screen. For those that are not aware, this is the screen out of a Nintendo DSi. This is the lower LCD with the uh, front shielding removed and the touch digitizer removed. If you were to take a D uh, DSi, load up a Game Boy Advance game, you can get a pretty damn good idea of what this is going to look like. You can even take your lens and throw it on there and see for yourself that it is damn near OEM sized. But if you already have a DSi, GBA Runner 2 gets you up and running with Game Boy Advance games and you can preview it. It's going to have the exact same colors, the exact same pixel spacing. You're going to get that um, pixel grid that so many of you are so fond of. 
because this is using a one-to-one -one scaling with a rather generous spacing between the pixels, so you get those little black lines up and down. It, it emulates the look of the original screen in the AGS 101 LCD a little bit more closely, but the downside is the contrast isn't as good compared to one of these things. Uh, the image isn't as sharp because it's not using integer, well I guess it is still using integer scaling, uh, but it's not scaling, it's one to one. Um, but it's still, you know, one's still an integer, I guess, so. Uh, the viewing angles aren't as good, but I don't know. I This thing still could be pretty decent. I don't know what the power usage looks like, and I still got to get it into a console to see. So I'm going to set these aside for the time being. And oh, I came with two of those 40 pin adapters and two LCDs. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do with the extra 40 pin adapter and LCD, but I guess it's nice to have for spares. Um, Thanks again to Funny Playing who sent this over to me. Uh, normally, these review units get sent my way from uh, Retro Game Repair Shop, but I think Funny Playing skipped the middleman this time and sent it sent it over straight. Uh, but I will once these are out. I will throw a link in the description to where you can get one of these. Again, I'm filming at the time I'm filming this. These these aren't out yet. They've been teased, they've been announced, but anyway, this is going to be tonight's donor. Um, for those that remember this, I was sufficiently lubricated and did a front light install, and I managed to mess it up something fierce, um, and this thing needs a new screen. I have been, I set this aside because I wanted to revisit it. Uh, but that's clearly not going to happen anytime soon, unfortunately. Uh, however, the Loka job I did on it has held up surprisingly well. Uh, for context, it is June 15th as I'm filming this, and there is zero spidering or any other issues with the Loka. But unfortunately, the panel is just backwards, so... We've got to scrap it, but the reason we're using this Game Boy instead of one of the other donors I have in my pile, this is a 40 pin, and I only have 40 pin adapters. So, I have a known working Game Boy. Let's go ahead and get it pulled apart, and let's get started. Excuse me if I sound a little bit off today. I've been feeling slightly under the weather the last few days. I was going to put this video off until I was feeling a little bit better, but I'm impatient, if you couldn't tell. I also got the time to do it right now, and I can't say that I will continue to have the time the next few days. Shame, it's such a good install. I mean, aside from literally being backwards. Oh, and for those, for those trying to follow along at home, can't really see it with this Game Boy because the uh, PCB is marked off for some reason. But you can see this little number on the PCB through the battery compartment through the battery door. It's hard to get the lighting right because of my lighting setup and you have to be able to see down that hole. But if the number begins with a zero, which this one does, that says zero two, then your console is 40 pin, 
begins with a one, then it's a 32 pin, or you can just pull the back cover off and look at the connector. If it's wider and has a 40 at the end, it's a 40 pin, and so on. For the most part, it doesn't matter too, too much because basically every backlight kit these days is compatible with both models. And this new Funny Playing one is not an exception, except in my particular case, just because it did not come with the red adapter. But again, I can't emphasize this enough. This is a pre-production, this is a preview of things to come. Just clean up these solder joints. Alright, we should be good. If you're tearing apart a normal Game Boy Advance, you shouldn't have to do any soldering. But like I said, this one had a front light mod that we that I had to undo. And that has been bothering me since I did the video. Alright, there we go. It's a little yellowed, but such is life with a clear shell these days. Otherwise, got a perfectly working now stock Game Boy Advance. And let's go ahead and pop this screen out. There shouldn't be any adhesive holding it in. Though in yours there should be. And for those looking at this front light module, my wires are coming out the left hand side here. They should be coming out the right side. But I messed that up. Alright. Let's get some power usage numbers because I'm sure it's just eating away at you. You gotta know. Funny Playing did mention that this kit should be more efficient than the uh, ITS kit before it. And it is clear to me that I need to pause and find the power connector for this. Alright, not what I was looking for, but this should work just fine. Uh, anyway. I have no reason to believe that Funny Playing would lie about that, but they were not specific on how much less power, so let us find out together. to get a baseline reading for this console because every console is going to be a little bit different. And I want to get the game I always use, my copy of Pokemon Emerald, because as it turns out it's a relatively popular game and lots of people like to play it. I am a little bit worried about that shorting. But we might be fine. Oh. Gonna bump that up a little. Okay. Run. And power on. Ah, someone thinks it's dinner time. Might have to pause in just a moment and feed him too. All right, so in game in the usual spot at 2.4 volts, this Game Boy pulls 109 to about 120. It looks 122. 
109 to 122 milliamps. Uh, it's pretty typical reading, nothing special about that. But without that number, we have no context for the next number. And I will go ahead and uh, throw this information in my spreadsheet that I link in the description. Ooh, we gotta put this together. I took it apart so I could show you how to put it together. So we always wanna test our kit before assembly. And this one's gonna be kind of a pain in the butt to assemble because there are two ribbons for the LCD side. But we wanna lift the bail up on the uh, outer edge for the big ribbon. And slip that in there. You might have to hold the bail up while you're slipping it in. Then you can close that. And then you have to lift the bail up on the inner edge for the little ribbon and then you can slip that in and this one is a pain in the butt so take your time if you mess up this little one you have no backlight all right and once that is in take this guy and I am fairly confident it goes, yeah. It goes pins down on the adapter side so that you can do pins up on the Game Boy side. I'm gonna leave that like that. Slip this game in. And here goes nothing. Ta-da! And for those wondering what that black smudge on the corner is, that's a watermark on the protector itself. That's nothing on the screen. Let's move that away so it doesn't short, just in case. All right, so we're going to do several tests. This has a touch sensor and several brightness levels. At the lowest brightness in the exact same spot, same game, at 2.4 volts. Looks like 147 to 171 milliamps. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten brightness levels. Uh, these are persistent after a reboot. Uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And at max brightness, it's pulling 256 to 278. All right, not, not terrible. Not great, not terrible. At the minimum brightness, uh, it does indeed pull less current than the uh, older 9380 based kits that looked like this from Funny Playing. Um, yeah, it, it is less, I'll give them that, but I personally wouldn't, oops, sorry, I personally wouldn't use it at that low a brightness level. It's, it's, a, li it's a little low. Um, but there you go. Tested, working, let's go ahead and continue the install itself. Uh, 
that we know our kit is working, which I'd be lying if I said I didn't test this before the video. But we always got to test it before install anyway. All right. So here's where things get interesting. So I have here one of the fantastic uh, custom printed IPS ready shells. From Funny Plane here. Got all the stickers going everywhere. I guess it comes with two sets of buttons. All right. But anyway, there you go. There's the shell. It was a nice IPS ready lens with pink text, which at the time was pretty cool. I think that's a uh, I think that's a thing that you can regularly get now. You know what? Let me get. I'm gonna leave that plugged in. I'm gonna grab the other screen they sent me just so I have something I can uh, handle without having to unplug that. But this would go in something like that. And if we were to just drop this in, I would have to look at everything I would have to cut out. I would have to cut out this entire bottom structure and some of the power switch area. Uh, alternatively, I might have to cut out some of the top area. Let me actually plug this back in to a Game Boy. Hang on. All right, this way. I have the image on the screen and we can see what it looks like if we try and center it. I'm pretty sure, oh no, see I had that wrong. If I try and put it in like I was about to, you'd see the image is down and to the left. Now, my understanding is Funny Playing is going to be making new shells that fit this if you don't want to um, play Amateur Plastic Surgeon. But this is, this is where it would fit in an IPS Ready shell. It's not great. Uh, our next choice is this thing. And I'm thinking it's going to look about the same. Ooh. We try and line that up with the top for trimming down the uh, bottom part. You can see again the image is to the bottom and to the left, but we do have one more option and if I'm frank I don't think it's a good one even if it does work, but let's try it. I have this IPS ready shell, um, but you notice the inside looks quite a bit different. It is a little bit more hollow. And let's try that out. And yeah, this one still needs quite a bit of cutting, but at least it's not to the left and low, it's just low. You need to cut out all this top area. Who that is rough. Okay. So we will be modifying an OEM shell for this. I'm gonna be cutting up this one. I'm just going to line that up best I can, try and find a reference and then go from there. I think this bottom corner is about where it needs to go. Which 
means... Oh yeah, okay. So that probably lines up with that. Almost. Oh, it's so close. I wonder what he was doing, but okay. Okay, I've got it, I've got it. Let me, let me switch this monstrosity off. Unplug this. And I'm gonna set this aside. And we'll use this one for test fitting. So, what we've got to trim, I have already done some trimming of this shell. You can see exactly what I've done. I've already cut out these little bottom corners here on the left and right, and this whole, uh, whatever you want to call this, uh, little ridge here. And then the screen itself is going to sit along this bottom support. And it's going to line up on the left side here. And then you just need to trim everything that gets in the way on the top. Which is... Not terrible, but not great. I am, I'm going to do this off camera because I want to use my uh, Dremel for this and setting up my camera at my Dremel is kind of a pain in the rear. But you'll, uh, you'll have to figure something out if you don't have a Dremel to use on this. We need to trim up to... About here, I think. I don't know if we need to trim that little piece. I will check in just a second. All right, yeah, it looks like we need to trim that off too. So all of the areas I have marked in red need to come down, and that is on top of all of the areas I have already trimmed, which is once again this bottom left-hand corner, bottom right-hand corner, and then this whole uh, nubbin ridge thingy that they have on stock shelves. I'm going to go trim this up, and I'm going to clean up these cuts that I did earlier with flush cutters. I will be back in, uh, well, right now. Ta-da! So what felt like endless trimming and uh, cleaning up and we finally got it. So yeah you have to trim that top edge right up to these little protrusions here. You can see halfway down there's some marks from where I started trimming but right up at the top there's still the red sharpie mark because that is exactly what I trimmed to, and that's it. You can see a few spots where I slipped with the tool, so uh, try not to do that. But otherwise, I think we are good. That'll fit in there. There's some left and right movement. Um, I think I might need to do a wee bit more trimming. because I believe this needs to go all the way over to the left. So let me just finish this up with some flush cutters. And if you're so inclined, you can do this whole thing with flush cutters, but if you're using a clear shell, it is going to look um, not great. But the option is there if you're uh, willing.
because I believe it needs to go flush against the left side here, which still doesn't have enough clearance. What's going on here? Oh, I just didn't cut flush. There we go. And then that should go just like that. I'm going to go ahead and tape this down. Not with a lot of tape, but some. Just a little bit on the top and a little bit on the bottom. Because otherwise this is going to be very difficult to install. Enough tape that I can remove it if I ever need to, but not enough tape that it'll move around if I don't want it to. see this thing in its full glory. should have washed my hands off to make sure I didn't get any this stuff, this plastic in there. But it's too late now, isn't it? Oh yeah. Oh well. Alright. installed. A more patient man than I would, uh, or woman, would take the time to actually clean this shell and these buttons. And I'm pretty sure I said something pretty darn similar last time I was uh, doing an install in this shell. And yet here we are. Ah, that is neat. So we have, I didn't look at this before, but let's talk about this ribbon real quick before continuing. We have four, te uh, four solder pads, and this is actually pretty typical. We usually get four solder pads, but you notice the left one is labeled T. If we look at the trace and follow it, we can see it goes to this touchpad right here. So if we really wanted to, we could just snip this touchpad off and then solder on a brand new touchpad of our own choosing to that sensor right there and then relocate the uh, touch. I'm probably not going to do that right this second, but it's nice to know. Then we have R, L, and S. So pretty typical for those ones, right, left, and uh, start or select or however you want to do it. But let's go ahead and get that wired up actually. Mm.
I suspect the final kit will have wire that comes with it so you can actually solder these up. Not 100% sure on that, don't quote me. But it seems like a reasonable thing to assume. Mine did not. I'm just going to use some wire that I have laying around. Actually, yeah. I'm just going to attach this here. That way I can get the wire the exact length we want it. the a boot there and I am fairly certain we want TP8 let me go ahead and grab the uh, multimeter here and where's a good ground that TP8 It is not TP8. Pretty sure it's supposed to be TP8. It's entirely possible that the button itself doesn't work, though. Yeah, that one is ground. Yeah, my button doesn't work. Okay, I'm gonna take a few minutes and figure out why my button's not working. All right, so I have gotten absolutely nowhere. I'm thinking, since both buttons are behaving the exact same, that it might just be operator error. So I'm just gonna continue and uh, hope that the problem itself, problem works itself out. But it is TP8 that we want to solder to. that long enough for that ooh it is nice I know with the Game Boy Advance shoulder buttons, there is actually a resistor on the output. And we want TP9 over here. So I think my multimeter just isn't beeping because it's going through that resistor. And there's just too much resistance to make it beep. So I think it is actually working. I'm just having um, difficulties. All right, one more. I don't want to use that wire. I want to save that for. that install 
That's too short. That's too short. Okay, fine, we'll use that wire. And this last one is going to be for start or select. I always forget which one is which. That is a terrible looking solder joint. Try that again. It's not much better, but at least it's not a dry joint. That'll go down here to TP2. which I believe is going to be start. It is the recommended solder point for it. And that should be it. We'll just have to route these wires in such a way that it doesn't get in the way of anything. But I think we should be good. Don't forget your LED light pipe. I'm not going to plug that in just yet. I just want to do a dry fit. See, something isn't fitting right. I think I've got multiple problems here. First is that this wire needs to come up about there. That way it clears that, uh, that support there. We're good on that side. in there. Good right there, good right there, but we're not good right there. Or are we? No, we're not. That doesn't even come close to fitting. Something's going on here. Oh, you know what? My LCD's too high up. Because it's getting caught on the link port. That is not fun. That is not fun at all. Because that means this entire bottom thing needs to come off. And my LCD is already kind of stuck down. Well, let's try and make it work anyway. Because it's super close. Oh no, it's not. It is not super close. What's going on is, see this little shelf on the back here, right where my fingernail is? It fits in just like that and it's getting caught on that shelf. So, our choices are pretty slim. Gonna have to move that whole thing down. This is not something I was looking forward to doing. But alright. That's where we're at. Now, luckily, I didn't use a whole lot of tape. 
Also, luckily, I have a plastic lens on this thing so I can just flex the whole shell. Where's my spudger? Thankfully, like I said, these LCDs are quite a bit thicker than those 9380s, so I'm not too concerned with breaking it. Should be good. Uh, and this last bit. Uh. I don't know which angle to approach this at. I think actually I'm going to come at this with a knoll. Do the old score and snap. This would be much cleaner on the Dremel. And I might have to go clean it up after this. Ah, oh, that is so disappointing. Alright, I'm gonna go clean this up on the Dremel. I'll be right back. Alright, it ain't fantastic, but it'll do. Fortunately, I don't have enough tape. Ooh, but I have another one I haven't cut off yet. I should have waited to tape the thing down. Oh well. You guys have the benefit of hindsight that I never got. that that is sticking out Ugh. messed up that tape Nice and thin, so I don't have to worry about that one with this try. There we go. Just give that a quick wipe down. 
Nothing fantastic, but this is a old used lens that kind of looks like garbage anyway, so I'm not too concerned. Keep removing this paper. Take two. I don't really have a reference for where this goes now. But I believe that should be clearance enough. Same from the front, because of course it does. But this time around we have about a millimeter of space between those notches that I cut up top. Just sit flat, indeed it does. Everything clears except for this wire here, which we will need to run up that way. For some reason, it is not sitting flat. I think this part is operator error. I'm going to fold this up and tuck it in. Ah, that's what it was. It was that touch sensor. Alright, we're in the home run. We're in the uh, final stretch, rather. Home stretch, that's the term I was looking for. Wires are routed a little funny, but they fit through the gaps in the shoulder buttons no problem, so I think we'll be okay. And the back appears to go on no problem.
These batteries always throw me off because usually the colored band is around the positive end, not the negative end. But 10 volts was feeling particularly spicy when they made these, apparently. Ah, oh, and I didn't get the alignment right. It's close, though. Apparently it needs to go over even more, and I got it too low. Also, it's a little crooked. I'll have to try again. Not right now, but I'll have to try again. My shoulder buttons actually work. Yeah, they do. All right, let's try a few of the usual tests real quick. So I am going to try, apparently gonna do this out of order. We'll start with Zelda. Bring that in. So like usual, we're looking at a few different things here. Uh, first thing, we're looking at this guy's chain. Because the original Game Boy didn't have a way of doing transparency, and for that matter, I don't think any Game Boy had a way of doing transparency, um, devs took advantage of the absolutely abysmal pixel response times on the original screens, and they would just flicker a sprite on and off about 60 times a second, and that's how they achieved transparency. This is achieving the effect pretty much perfectly. I don't know if that is a factor of the kit itself or the screen, because this is using an original Nintendo screen, or a remanufactured, I, I don't know if it's actually original, but it's same spec at the very least. So this screen might just have the terrible pixel response times needed to emulate that effect. Either way, looks spot on. The other thing we're going to check is if I go back and forth real quick between these two s scenes, we're gonna look at the ghosting of the, uh, we're gonna look at another pixel response test. Uh, we're not seeing the same artifacts that I normally see on the 9380 kits, which is these logs just messing up that grass area as it transfers, but I am seeing some ghosting just as a result of the, I'm guessing, poor pixel response. It's not bad, but it's not great. It's actually pretty on par with a Nintendo screen. I wonder why. Uh, let us try the scrolling bars test. Last few kits have passed this with flying colors. I don't imagine this one will be any different. Yep, looks fantastic. We shouldn't see any, um, skipping or tearing except for when the s in the word scrolling crosses the left hand side of the screen and that is indeed what we're seeing so that is a pass with flying colors there and i think that's about all i have to test with this i need to find my easy flash which is not in the console I thought it was. Just kidding. Found it. All right, let's try out 240 MP. We are going to do the grid. 
As you can see, my screen is not centered. There is a little bit cut off, but it's pretty darn close. Uh, I got it too low, so there's a bit of a gap at the top. I got it too far over to the right, so there's a bit of a gap at the uh, right. Sorry, I got it too far over to the left, so there's a bit of a gap over at the right. But the left side doesn't really appear cut off. It does from my angle, but not from the camera angle. And then the bottom is cut off both from my angle and the camera angle, and you can see that my screen is crooked just from the level it's cut off, but that's a little bit more representative of what I'm seeing. has nice linearity, that is perfect, that is a circle, that is supposed to be a circle, and it certainly looks like a circle. Uh, I say this every time, but there's another test I want to do, and I always forget which one it is. Ooh, but this is an interesting test. Uh, let us actually... I can, I can show this effect a little bit better with the uh, AGS Aging ROM which is Nintendo's test ROM. If we go to the flicker adjuster, you can see that, well, it's not really coming out on camera, but I can see in person that my screen is flickering a little bit, which means that the uh, adapter ribbon is not it's not perfectly calibrated to this LCD. Now, if this were an AGS-101 modded AGB, I'd simply pop my screwdriver in the little hole under the label, right about here-ish, wherever it is, and then I'd adjust that potentiometer until that flicker went away. Because this is a backlight kit, I can't do that. There would have to be an adjustment on the ribbon itself, and there did not appear to be one. So unfortunately, in some cases, we might get a little bit of flicker, depending on what's on the screen trying to see if I can get an angle where that picks up, but I don't think that's going to come through. It's not terrible. Don't get me wrong. It's definitely not terrible. It's just not what I like to see. Oh, let's actually try one more thing. I'm going to pop out the game before we continue. Oh, there we go. It's select, not start. See, that's why I always get them confused. But brightness controls work pretty much how you'd expect them to. Hold select, L brings them down. Hold select, R brings it up. That's it. Let's go ahead and do one more test here. I'm going to go ahead and pop Emerald in my AGS-101. We're going to start it here. I can give you a bit of a color comparison. I think we'll mute one of those. Alright, so there you go. There is a perfectly stock AGS-101. Let's see if we can bring the brightness down a little bit more. I think they're about the same. It's hard to tell because the colors are a little bit different. But there you go. It might not be coming through on camera. And for that, I apologize. But in person, this one does appear to have better colors. The contrast ratio is better. Uh, it is a little bit more, um, I'm forgetting the term, but it's the opposite of washed out. Saturated. It's a little bit more saturated, and I think that looks a little bit better. Uh, it looks better, certainly, than um, those Cloud Game Store kits compared to the 9380 kits. That one looked really... Uh, washed out compared to the 9380 kits, whereas this looks more saturated than AGS-101. So side by side, yeah, 
I think this is definitely the better looking screen than this one. Let me get another area over here. I want to look at all them browns. Oh my goodness. Worst thing about Pokemon Emerald. And yeah, maybe you can see that a little bit better in the uh, cave. Let me kill that light. <sighs> yeah, it's hard to see on my phone screen how these are looking. But I will say in person this one does look better. Now let's go ahead and... Uh, actually, I still have this thing on. This has, this has my save, it's just a very old one, so we'll have to go somewhere else. This is not the console I should be doing that on. Oh, goodness. I had no idea what Pokemon this game had. And none of those no fly, so we can't go anywhere on this game. I have to swap games. And my screensaver's on. Let's try that out. Now the point of this is really just going to be to show that these should look about the same. Let's go to Lily Cove. That's interesting. Do you see that line going across the top in the ground? It'll go away and come back when I advance through the text. I don't know if that's a game quirk, but it is something I just noticed. There you have it. Again, this one I think looks a little bit better in person. It's a little bit more saturated, but that could just be the difference between a newly manufactured screen and an original Nintendo screen. I'd have to plug this, ooh. I'd have to plug this LCD into the console. I think this top LCD is actually a new screen. You can see they look a little bit closer, but this one still looks a little bit more washed out. On the bright side though, this isn't using an adapter, so I could just pop the battery door off and use the potentiometers. I think they're up here actually. The potentiometers to calibrate the screens. This one's probably out of calibration, but it is what it is. Oh, I'm hitting the touch sensor. Apparently I can trigger it with the DS. But there you go. Let us do one more comparison. I'll have to adjust this one because I still don't have the brightness controls hooked up to this prototype. You can see, right off the hop, this screen gets a lot brighter. So if brightness is your thing, IPS is the way to go. We'll have to go back to... That's, that's really hard to compare because there are such wildly different brightness levels. Uh, let me get, let me pause and get a better comparison. All right, so it turns out my other slate was a better comparison because this one actually has the uh, touch sensors installed. Oh. 
Nope. I think that's about the same brightness. Let's try one more. Okay, there we go. The camera thinks that's about the same brightness. They don't look like the same brightness to me, but again, it could just be the angle because the viewing angles are much worse on this screen than they are on this one. So looking at the colors, I mean, it's hard to say which one I prefer. I think this one's gonna be a little bit more faithful to what the art style should look like, but that doesn't necessarily mean it looks better. I think this one looks better. But again, this one uses integer scaling and it does not have that, uh, that pixel grid effect that this one has. Like if you look at the walls of the Pokemon Center, you can see all them juicy pixels. And we'll bring back this one again. You can see it's nice and smooth. I mean, if you look close, especially since this is in 4K, if you're watching at the full resolution, you can probably pick up on the pixels, but they're much, much smaller. I think, I don't know, I still think this looks better, but you know, it's, it's rough. Again, the viewing angles, they're not, they're not great, but that's because this isn't an IPS screen. But if your thing is those uh, pixels and you want it to look as original as possible while still being backlit, then uh, I guess this is a pretty solid way to go. The performance is pretty much what we'd expect of funny playing at this point. It's pretty darn solid there. I see zero issues with the frame rendering in theory because it's not doing any um, line doubling or anything it should be using less power but again that's going to depend on the brightness and uh, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to take a look at those numbers again put it in my spreadsheet and you know take a look at that if you want to see the actual numbers compared side by side but is it a good option yeah, this is, this is a fantastic option. Would I get this option over one of these screen kits? No, no, I, I really don't think I will. One, one neat thing you still get with the older 9380 style kits is you can see I have these flat up against each other. You can see the 9380 is, it, it's bigger. They're, uh, it's like a 3.2 versus a 3 inch screen. And you can see that touch sensor keeps triggering with my other Game Boy up next to it. I don't know what that means, but it is interesting. <laughs> but yeah. I don't know. It's up to you. Uh, I suppose... I suppose a lot of the decision on whether to get this kit or not is going to come down to price and availability. As it is right now, it is much more difficult to install because how much you have to carve up the kit or how much you have to carve up the shell, there are no off the shelf shells available for this thing. Uh, it is my understanding that Funny Playing will be making new Game Boy Advance shells. I don't know the timeline on that. I don't know what they're doing with the old shells. I don't know if the, they're going to continue to make the, both of them. I don't know if this kit is replacing the other kit. All I know is that this is their new kit that they're going to be releasing relatively soon. They sent it my way to check out. And it is a, a, a fantastic kit. Uh, unfortunately, it does not have my recommendation, but it certainly has my seal of approval. Um, I... If I were doing this over, I would cut that touch sensor off. 
I'm not intentionally grabbing the Game Boy to hit the touch sensor. This is generally just how I would grab the Game Boy. Um, unless I'm actually holding it like I want to play. But I don't like that touch sensor there. I keep triggering it. I would have cut that touch sensor off and rewired it so that it was down below the screen lens. And I could hit it there to uh, touch it. Kind of like I have this one set up. But... It is nice that you have that option. I am, I really like the direction that Funny Playing is going um, with the solder points on the detachable ribbon itself. That way when people don't listen to me and decide to learn how to solder on their expensive backlight kit and mess that up, all they have to do is replace the cheap ribbon and not the expensive ribbon. Uh, relatively cheap, I expect it'll be about five bucks a pop. Um, but that's that's just a guess if they're even sold separately But chances are pretty good even if they aren't sold separately you can get one from someone else um, Because these kits should come with a 32 pin and a 40 pin So let's say you mess up a 40 pin and your buddy has one of these kits But they use the 32 pin you can just get that extra 40 pin off them easy peasy um I think that's fantastic. I also really like that you have either touch controls if you want to use that, or you can wire up uh, buttons for brightness, or you can use both, uh, as I have set up here. My personal preference is one or the other buttons, uh, but I guess it is kind of nice to have both. And I'm pretty sure I mentioned this before, but it does retain that brightness setting. So it's at relative max. I don't know what, I don't know if it was actually at the max. Now it's at the minimum. Power it off, reset it. Comes back on to the minimum. It's pretty nice because we haven't seen that before with funny playing kits on the Game Boy Advance at least. So I dig it, I like it. Of course I'm using this as an example for Game Boy Advance. This is neither a Game Boy Advance kit nor a funny playing kit, but I think it's still a good comparison because it's using an LCD that it that the funny playing kit uses. But anyway, I'm rambling. I'm tired. I think I've covered this thing about as much as I can at this point. I am going to go ahead and give that install another shot, but I'll probably do it tomorrow, not tonight. Um, I don't know, there's a lot of trimming that you have to do. And as of right now, there's no, there's no guides or anything. I've, I've had to figure this all out myself. Funny Playing just sent me the two LCDs, the one adapter, and then the two 40 pin ribbons. So, we'll figure it out. But otherwise, in the meantime, please check out the description. I've got tons of helpful links to all the stuff I've used, including the test ROMs that I have on my flash cart, the spreadsheet that I have that contains the power usage numbers and brightness measurements that I've taken of these screens, or that I've taken of the other screens and that I will be taking of this shortly. Um, links to other videos, etc., etc. You know what? Let's test one more thing. Let me hang on. Sorry. One more thing. One more thing. One more thing. All right. Here it is. I found it. This is the, not the cloud game store, the one chip, the most recent kit from them that uses that drop in screen. Even though this is a TV out mod. Oh god, the buttons are awful on this. What did I do? But I think this would be a pretty darn good comparison because it is the newest kit that the competition is putting out. Uh, I will say, Funny Playing's kit does get a little bit darker. Oh wait, never mind, that's the angles. That's the angles again, because the angles on this one 
are quite a bit better as you can see. Let me match that up with the camera. Oh, and as you can see now, it's triggering by itself. Oh, apparently if my Game Boy is clipped. That's nuts. This is why I don't like touch sensors. I'm gonna have to remove that touch sensor just to compare them. Because now it's just triggering off anything. We'll probably have to do um, what we had to do with the Cloud Game Store kit, which was trim that touch sensor so it's not hitting the uh, the bottom half of the shell. But I'm thinking that's something that uh, Funny Playing can work out. It's really hard to compare these two with that going off like that. I will say the colors are darn near identical on the two. I'm actually liking Funny Playing's color reproduction a little bit better with this specific example at least. Good lord. Yeah, this one looks a little green, I guess. Kind of blue. It's hard to say. Out of these two kits, and I'll link to this one, this is the one chip TV out kit that I just did a video on and probably haven't even published yet. Uh, whereas this is Funny Playing's kit that I, literally this video, I think the Funny Playing kit for visual fidelity is the better option. The downside of course is if you were looking at the one chip kit in the first place, this one has TV out functionality, which Funny Playing does not have. But if you're looking at just handheld, in this case, Funny Playing is the way to go. Just look at Ethan's face, man. Looks kind of wonky compared to that. Granted, I do like that integer scaling a little bit better. but I prefer the colors on that one. Yeah, so it's interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Anyway, sorry, I hope, I hope this video wasn't entirely too confusing. I know it went on pretty long, and again, I apologize for that, but I kinda had to figure out the install as I went. Um, but it is what it is. I will make a new video when this kit officially releases. I will probably just install the exact same kit again just in another Game Boy or at least with another shell. Um, but either way, I'll cover it again when we have more details and when we have more accessories. Um, or for instance, when we have new shells, uh, maybe alignment brackets, the list goes on. At the very least, when we have more information. But in the meantime, Check out the description. I have links to my guide on backlight kits that I do update whenever a new backlight kit comes out or whenever I get new information on any of the existing or new backlight kits, so on and so forth. There's a lot of good stuff in the description. You guys are missing out if you're skipping it. Um, and that's all I've got. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a fantastic night. And thanks again, Funny Playing, for sending this my way to check out.